Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report, and we have some amazing lineup of guests for you today in the first hour, and now very frequently we'll be having Christina Consolo. She should be coming on, hopefully on Friday afternoons, and also we'll have you another full show on Friday afternoons. I'd like to have you back, Christina, because you're doing a lot of really good research during the next two or three months. Robert Felix will be off doing some work, I think, on probably another project book or video. And he's done really well with actually having his book on uh, Ice Age uh, and Now, and not by fire but by ice, uh, the research on the magnetic reversals and, and uh, evolutionary leaps uh, research that he's done now in Italian. So that's really good. He was just over in Europe uh, with the publishing house. Uh, Christine, I want you to do an update. You've got a lot of information here to cover today. And um, before we start, I want you people out there to understand that you need two things in order to confirm with whatever we're saying to you. It should be something that you either need to take to heart, ask other questions, or take action. And I always tell people you need to do two things. Sharpen your intellect, which means always ask better questions when you're presented with something so you can determine you have to own the truth. You can't just kind of believe it carte blanche because Deagle said it or Christina Consolo said it or John Moore said it. You also have to ask logical questions. Then you have to get quiet and you have to pray. And I personally pray, but I call the Most High God to actually get a discernment as to what, what I've been told is true or not. Now, the latest uh, is a lot of panic of oh, people. In fact, I got a call this morning from Ron Class, the president of the A4M. I get calls all, all the time now and emails, people panicking over the information we presented on Friday. Uh, here's my personal take on it as it is right now. And again, it may change, but this is what I have at the moment. Number one, uh, when you see intelligence information coming from multiple sources, at least four to six sources, all saying relatively the same thing, and I have no, neither scientific corroboration or other intelligence sources, and when I pray, I have no spiritual confirmation that the close events that they're talking about are going to happen, it means it's a government psyop. So you can take it to the bank that on the 16th of August or on the 26th of September, as it stands right now, unless they get some major new revelation of information, either spiritually or technically from an astronomer, it's not going to happen. This is done typical of, of intelligence agencies like the NSA, who says that they're not monitoring every American. When I went there in 1994 and was given security clearance, uh, Q level security clearance for U.S. Space Command, and I was a civilian, not a military, and their policy was we can fire your butt if you're a civilian, but if you're military, we have other ways to have to deal with you. And uh, so it's easier to have civilians. And what they told us is now that you're one of us, we're going to tell you everything. And believe me, everything's a lot. In fact, I only tell people about 10% of what I know. Most of the stuff that I know, you out there could not handle it. Take it to the bank, you couldn't. Now, what we have to understand is basic preparedness is important. And Christina is an amazing researcher in terms of dealing with not only things like San Onofre, but the sinkholes, about nuclear reactors here in America, like the Diablo Canyon reactor in San Onofre. We have so many problems that you can concretely research, even on the open media, and things that people should take action now, like having prepare-wise food, water, self-defense, and getting ready that these other things are big distractions. And if there was something going to happen, believe me here, at the Neutral Medical Report with Dr. Deagle, because I'm a scientist and I've been called by the Most High God to have the office of a prophet, so I have the scientific and technical and intelligence contacts, the logic to be able to analyze it, and then I go off and pray. And believe me, this weekend was not a pleasant weekend. I had some horrifying visions of air attacks on Iran. And let me tell you, uh, if you read the Old Testament about hearing prophets literally thrown on the ground with sackcloth and ashes, literally crying out at the back of a cave, that's what it was like this weekend for a number of spells that I had of what I see coming. Uh, this is no joke. What I see coming and what they're preparing for, probably after the election, because they want to throw the election, it's obvious to me, in the direction of Obama for a second term. It, Romney could easily, just with a kind of like a flick of his wrist, just having a, right, a pro-life vice president like Michelle Bachman, could easily deal with, with uh, policies to deal with Fukushima, could easily talk about hardening our power grid against the coronal mass ejection, could easily deal with any of the economic issues by calling for a, even before he's elected, calling for an audit, a full audit, just like Ron Paul has through the, through the Senate, through, sorry, through the Congress, passed for over 400 votes to six, uh, and six and full universal passed through the uh, the Senate. This needs to happen. We need to also harden our power grid, which uh, Lisa Murkowski, the senator uh, in from Alaska, turned over, so we won't have our hardened power grid. 
But nothing's being done since we have a new director of, of, of the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We have no international body going to Japan to deal with the fact that they are doing a war game the last two weeks there for a mass evacuation of the largest metropolitan area on Earth, 45 million people, they say within four years. And just like this war game that we keep reporting with John Moore, you need to take it to the bank. I have no scientific and technical indication that the events will happen between August and September of this year. I do have evidence that at some future date we're going to have major CMEs, and there's a special on Discovery Channel, I'm sorry, on uh, DirecTV, talking about, if you want to call it, the CME kill shot. Well, let me tell you, the kill shot is coming. We also have asteroids coming. This asteroid we mentioned on Friday, 2012 DA-14, is 197 feet across. These things come in at the rate of about one a century. And the last one hit the Tunguska area of Siberia. If it hit the ocean, it would raise a wall of water 1,200 feet high. It could strike the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean because the surface area is most likely to strike the Pacific. And that would devastate up to three to five miles inland anywhere on the coast of the United States. So people aren't prepared for anything, and they think these events are anomalies that won't happen. Just like tritium released from reactors like in Quebec, I want you to get into this, Christina. It is a standard that all, not some, all nuclear reactors vent off tritium. Tritium causes mutations. It causes what's called translocation of the DNA codons, and you get what's called a codon slip. So after my little rant, I want people to understand, take this seriously, do two things. Don't believe what we say at all, unless you've done two things. Ask better questions, and then go off and pray. And if you haven't done those two things, for God's sake, don't take any action. And if you have done those two things and have a confirmation, start with simple things like getting three weeks of water, getting food, talk to your family, getting walkie-talkies so you can communicate, have a place to collect. Be ready for anything from a simple power outage to a pandemic flu, which is coming, because now we have the release of the H3N2V, which I predicted, and this may just be the next big wave that's really going to take off by the September. Because I can tell you we're going to enter the new world order, not with a gun to our head, but a mask on our face. All manufactured by the global elite power maniacs, socio-psychopaths. So, Christina, let's start with the top. You've got a long list of things to go over here, uh, so let's roll. We had a Canadian nuclear expert that uh, came out yesterday saying that the Gentilly reactor in Quebec releases 200 trillion becquerels of tritium every year, just as part of normal operation, but I mean, this occurs at, at every reactor. Every reactor. Yeah. The reason is, let me explain the physics of it. A reactor basically has what's called slow and fast neutrons. The can-do reactors in Canada use heavy water, which is deuterium, to slow the neutrons down so they can cause a chain reaction in non-reprocessed lower-grade uranium. So they can take lower-grade uranium instead of having really high-grade uranium, which means the Canadian reactors don't generate weapons-grade uranium for nuclear bombs. So they can take lower-processed uranium with tons and tons of heavy water from heavy water plants, like the one in, in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. They can then put this heavy water around these reactor cores, and they can simply regulate the heat and the amount of steam produced. When you have neutrons that hit water molecules, they turn normal H2O to H2O with one neutron or two neutrons where they become tritium. When you have tritium, it displaces the DNA one base pair because there's four different codon base pairs on a codon for each different letter of your DNA. When that happens, your DNA cannot, it's like a zipper that can't unzip. You know when you see the teeth in a zipper? It actually pushes the zipper over one tooth. And that means your DNA can never reproduce correctly, making new RNA, DNA, or new cells. Pretty serious, isn't it? And not some reactors, but every reactor on Earth, 504 reactors, all do this. Yeah, and, and internal radiation we know is 10 to 100 times more damaging than external radiation. So anything that settles down on your food supply and your water supply and you breathe it in or you drink or ingest it, um, it's going to concentrate in things like your thymus gland, your endocrine glands, the spleen, bones, the heart. And your endocrine system centers communicate with everything in your body. Exactly. Christina, let's uh, get into all of the important data you have to prepare for everybody. Is That's Gentilly Reactor in Quebec, and I have all these links directed to e News. Uh, you have lots of other things to talk about, but that means... 
Number one, all reactors are giving off, if you look at zones around them, up to 120 miles, you see increased rates of dementia, autoimmune disease, premature dates, which is small for dates. You'll see uh, small brain size. You'll see all kinds of genetic anomalies, including Down syndrome and other anomalies. All of these trisomic anomalies and every life form around it are increased with tritium. Now, what's happening with the giant corium underneath the ground is it's creating what's called corium uh, steam-generated tritium, generated steam uh, tubes that can go many kilometers and can vent over the bottom of the ocean floor, can vent 10, 20, 30, 40 kilometers away from the uh, Fukushima Daiichi plant. And these can then really come up through the ground and you can't even see it arriving, entering the hydrological cycle because it looks and acts like water, but it's not. It's tritium. Yeah, they've had some major problems around some of the new plants in the past. Um, Vermont Yankee, for one, had a very excessive tritium uh, groundwater contamination. They had pipes underground that were actually leaking, and the uh, the executives from that plant lied under oath, saying that there were no pipes underground. And later right. on, it was found out that they, there were, and well, that they were cracked and leaking into the groundwater. Reports I have from my sources are 75% of the plants in North America will admit to having tritium problems. Well, I want to recorrect that, and I'll challenge any scientist, nuclear expert, or anybody who thinks they know better, that 100%, 100%, even if you have full cold containment between your steam turbines and whatever, you cannot stop tritium, as superheated tritium, from going through these tiny micro cracks in the crystalline structure of pipes. Other isotopes will be blocked, but not tritium. 100% of plants give off tritium. They may not give off strontium, cesium, and other isotopes unless there's a major breach in the containment chamber like they did at the Mark I reactors in Japan and 25 reactors in the United States out of 104. But all, all reactors on Earth vent off tritium, all of them. The first victims of that kind of exposure are always children. As, as with a serious nuclear accident, there's an increase in allergies, aggravation, of infectious diseases, you know, which become chronic and involve serious complications down the road. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is the incidence of autism and bone and brain cancer around these new plants. And children are much higher if you look at the rain out maps and how they correspond to where these right. diseases occur. Now, um, I want to kind of tie all these together. And you had to, in your list of things I want to we'll kind of direct because we have so much to cover today. The first one is geologists on Earth's data about the sediment of a huge tsunami hit the Pacific Northwest in 1700. Now, they hit, on average, between three and 500 years, roughly about every 300 years. And if you've lived in the Northwest, like I lived in many years ago, I did my residency in Vancouver General in the late 70s, and my son lives in Portland. I'm very familiar with the Northwest and the, sub uh, the Cascadia subduction zone. The native peoples will tell you very clearly, because they're very intelligent, that back in 1700 they had a major major tsunami and we're not talking about a little tsunami you talked about literally subsidence of entire areas of forest who became seafloor right and that, and that occurred um, very close to Diablo Canyon plant right. the, where that sits now and PG&E when they um, put together their risk analysis before Diablo Canyon was built they did not include that tsunami data from the 1700s they included the, the last 200 years in which there were, I believe, 24 tsunamis um, in the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, along the California coast. And, and they get hit from tsunamis regardless of where they occur along the Pacific Rim. 80% of the tsunamis in the world occur in the Pacific Ocean. Right. And the fact is, uh, the one that's to die was about 120 feet. Uh, the one that struck 300 years ago is in 1700. I believe you have the date January 26, 1700. That yep. tsunami is estimated to be three to five hundred feet high minimum. Yeah, three, three and that's not even the biggest one ever recorded. The largest one was actually seventeen hundred feet that occurred in Alaska. Yeah, along a fjord. Well, actually, so, the one uh, that I, the, I, I yeah, the biggest one actually that I know recorded uh, geologically, uh, estimated from the geological events, was 550,000 years ago. One of the volcanic islands of the Hawaii chain broke off, fell in the ocean, and created a tsunami half a mile high, traveling at over 700 miles an hour. But that's half a million years ago. So it was a regular one. So we're talking about regular tsunamis, are about every 300 years, roughly. 
Yeah, and Diablo Canyon is just 45 feet above sea level. Well, we now also have San Onofre, and believe it or not, from our expert uh, Ann Morrison and the other reports we have, they're planning on, they call it like-for-like like engineering, they're planning on reactivating by November the San Onofre plant. The San Onofre plant was originally designed for 9,750 steam turbine tubes per turbine, they had in total 20,000 tubes per turbine, engineered incorrectly because they vibrated against each other and caused excessive wear, massive release not only of tritium but other radioisotopes. My radiation detector went four times background for four days after the hot shutdown when somebody hit a few keystrokes in uh, Yuma, Arizona, and shut down six million people's power from Southern California to the Baja, Mexico, and uh, Arizona. So this just shows you how stupid, I mean, like uh, Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does. Einstein's statement is very appropriate. Genius is measurable. Stupidity is limitless. Yeah, everywhere you look, there's just been gross mismanagement of nuclear power. And, and those plants should have never been built on the coast. And, oh, and once yeah. they restart it, they won't be able to shut it down. The people mm -hmm. around there need to speak out now. Well, what people have to understand, all these plants, like that plant there in San Onofre, generates on average three to 500 pounds of weapons-grade plutonium because of the breeder reactor every year. Three to 500 pounds. That means with 10-pound plutonium, you can create a very large nuclear weapon times about 30 to, to 50 per year just from that one reactor. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a lot of nuclear yeah. weapons. Yeah. They're, I'm thinking out a city the size of Moscow. Right they're bomb-making plants. Know. Yeah, they're bomb-making plants is what they are. And the same with uh, Fukushima. Most people don't really remember the story about the Oki Maru bringing all the nuclear isotopes from the fall of the Soviet Union. Part of the plan was we'd spend billions of dollars to buy all their nuclear material. And guess where we shipped it? We shipped it to TEPCO and General Electric, not only at the Daiichi plant, but the Daini plant and other plants across the Japan, who has the next to America and Israel and Russia, the most advanced uh, rocket launching system for launching satellites. And they have an occult or hidden nuclear weapons uh, development program, they could literally snap on their warheads in a weekend and they'd be fully armed as much as uh, as Russia or more advanced, I believe, than China by a large margin. Japan uh -huh. has far more nuclear-grade materials than China by thousands of times. Crazy, yeah, isn't it? Uh, Fukushima Daiichi had the, the best uh, weapons-grade um, plutonium refinement or enriching uh, processing in the right. world well, at that plant. Now, what they were doing is, of course, the Germans had decided to develop a, a system uh, using a specific, uh, how can I say, radio frequency uh, enrichment technologies. The latest that the Japanese have designed and Americans is using lasers, and laser enhancement for refining is was being used at that plant. I've heard from my sources. They're using laser enhancement which is laser refining, which means you can refine with very low energy, relatively low cost, and very, very small facility, an incredible amount of super high weight weapons plutonium. So that's another background here that you probably don't know, and we want to get into more things like the recent test in Ottawa, Canada, that you can get on YouTube, and much more. Jeffrey Imelt's report on the lack of defending the ability of finances for nuclear reactors anywhere. Christina, you have um, some data regarding Ottawa. I looked at this video this morning when I was in my hyperbaric chamber, and I was, like, freaking out when I saw the data. I think we know that, that after January 1 in uh, Yugoslavia, where was it, the uh, Czech Republic, they picked up radioactive plutonium after the January 1, 2012 further earthquake that now is 500 times more earthquakes, level 5 or higher in Japan. They picked up radioactive plutonium. But this rain test in Ottawa was, like... And typical Canadian humor, they're looking at it and say, oh, my gosh, they're not trying to cover it up, like a lot of Americans or Brits or someone else may be kind of covered up. Canadians are much more what we call super polite, and they don't know how to lie very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had some other um, videos similar to that um, that were shot in, in B.C. recently and in Brazil. And, right, yeah. um there, there seems to be, uh, you know, some indications there's a high washout and rain. And, and the in interesting thing about that, too, is these soaks that people have been using in these videos, they don't even pick up the alpha particles. 
they're only measuring beta and gamma. Right. Now, uh, you have lots of other data here. You mentioned about Jeffrey Imel talking about that in this in news uh, alert, about nuclear power really hard to defend financially. Everybody knows that. Without the government grants, without everything, these look, every nuclear plant is a scam, I call it scamtastic, to create nuclear weapons to end the life on Earth, period. Every nuclear plant. And there's a side effect, too, of it uh, drumming up business for the healthcare industry by making everyone sick that lives around it. And that's just under normal operations. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Normal. And, of course, all the waste, like all these reactors, like San Onofre, you have 40 years plus waste that's been stored on site. Uh, the next is the sinkhole story, which you have uh, two in Florida and other ones. Tell us about the sinkholes. How does this tie in with what you mentioned? You have 20 points on, well, we call it Planet X. I'm going to clarify so people will know in advance. I'm the first to say this. It is not a brown dwarf star, and it's not a planet. It's a red dwarf subclass 3, which in a sense is a very magnetically active star, probably a considerably smaller mass than the sun, but a magnetic field orders of magnitude greater. And they need to know about this, but these sinkholes are an example of the geomagnetic effects on the Earth and the shifting uh, mantle. And it's and along with the uh, these effects on the Earth and the mantle, Sinkholes are developing all over the planet, aren't they? Yeah, especially in the coastal areas. And in some of these sinkhole events, uh, specifically the one that occurred in Florida and in Washington State, there were large sand geysers that occurred right. prior to the sinkhole forming. They had one in Louisiana. I watched the, uh, the video on it on the weekend. And I, I think they cleared out about 160 homes because literally it's, it's consuming the homes. The homes are just falling in. And you look and say, my gosh, it looks like you see nice trees and everything in a nice area. And people are totally boggled. And the government says, we don't know what's doing it, and we have no idea why it's happening. Yeah, the one in Louisiana on the bayou is very concerning, too, because of its proximity between the Mercondo well and the New Madrid Fault. Now we have this, you know, giant sinkhole there's interrupting a, there, and releasing there, gas bubbles in the swamps. Uh, yeah, there's a, a, there's a link there. There's a uh, there's a link there. Let me give you my theories why the sinkholes are significant. What's happening? If you create a vacuum, something will move into it, right? Uh huh. When you have methane hydrates at the bottom of the ocean, how deep do you think the methane hydrates are at the bottom of the of the Gulf of Mexico? How far down do you think they go below the surface of the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico? How many miles into the ground, or? Yeah, how many miles below the bottom of the of the Gulf of Mexico floor, sea floor? I'm not sure, thousands of feet, I would assume. Mile and a half to two miles, minimum. Mm -hmm. that, and when they go to the surface, they're around 640 times volume what they were at the sea floor. And methane hydrates, methane, by the way, is a greenhouse gas, uh, not like chlorofluorocarbons. It is a greenhouse gas. It also is very explosive. And what can happen is you can actually have what's called a collapse of the seafloor and form what's called a, uh, a methane hydrate tsunami. And one of the things that they've known is they've known since 1951 not to drill at the Macondo site. That's why it was called the devil's food. You don't drill there. Uh, they did. And they knew also there were fault line connections connecting it all the way up to the New Madrid fault system all the way from the Gulf of Mexico. This is, it's, the fault system's all linked because what we're dealing with is a basilisk. That's why these, these tar balls, because it's a tar volcano, the tar balls coming up on the Gulf of Mexico were radioactive. Most people say, oh, no. They were like 220, 40, 60, 120 pound tar balls that showed up, and if you brought your radiation detector, they're going to go click, click, click off the scale with radioisotopes, uranium, and other isotopes in those tar balls. And they look like blood, blood red, too. Very concerning, too, is the number of um, earthquakes and tremors that are shaking the houses prior to this thing called forming uh, around right. the same time that the bubbles were noticed in the swamps. Right. So what's happening is we're getting movement of... underground there. We're getting what's called movement of the oil in the basilisk. What's really happening is I've heard that there's thousands of tons of Corexit 9500, which is made by ExxonMobil, which is completely neurotoxic. It's in... Uh, hydrocarbon distillates, and oil spill leader, too, is non-toxic and used by five branches of the U.S. military, but because the environmental poisoning agency, the EPA, they determined to make certain the only one they'll certify is the ExxonMobil Corexit, which they still are putting thousands of gallons down, and they're pumping it at the exit sites of this tar volcano, not on the sea surface where you'd see the oil coming up, to put it down below so it separates the distillate, and all that's left is a vaseline like tarry substance that can't float to the surface. So you can't see the oil is still coming up. 
up from the Gulf of Mexico floor because it's still leaking. They don't want you to know this. Oh, come on down. It's time to eat shrimp. Time to vacation. There's nothing about this in, uh, on the news in Florida either. I have friends that live down there that are just completely oblivious to what's going on. Well, we have our, our sources. as they, Some of them are want to come on. And uh, this is crazy. You've got some other reports here, too, about uh, new meaning of hot cereal. This is Kellogg's from Japan. Tell us about that. Yeah, in the last few weeks, they, they've detected on some imports of uh, tea being radioactive, and um, now we have Kellogg's cereal from Japan uh, that they found, I believe it was 20 becquerels per kilogram. Um, you know, these, these numbers, are, you're just going to see it in more and more products because of bioaccumulation, right. uh, and biomagnification. We're going to see more and more of these stories all the time. And, you know, just a few months ago, they were reporting 20,000 becquerels per kilogram in earthworms, and now they found 20,000 becquerels per kilogram in a person. Right. In Japan. I mean, you know, this, I mean, that the rate that this is increasing is just mind boggling. Now, I want to give a little caveat here. In When the scientists thought all the living forms would be killed off in Chernobyl, what it did was really interesting. If you look at human beings, one person in 100 to one in 200 is radiation resistant. You can give them a lot of radiation that would kill 95% of people, but 5%, or that 1%, in one, that's one, half of one percent are radiation resistant. About three in a hundred are radiation sensitive. And it's all based on how many copies of things like glutathione peroxidase, SOD, and other genes. And they often have what's called extra copies of the gene. What happens is that it selects out of the population anybody who's radio sensitive. So the unborn, anybody with gene defects, anybody frail or elderly, anybody teetering in the engine developing a serious health problem like diabetes or other illnesses, it triggers those diseases and activates them all over the world. So this basically, I consider this a massive radiogenetics eugenics program because there's no action whatsoever. It's bad enough to have the situation happen where they build reactors, I call an earthquake central, but to do nothing indicates that there's an agenda. Agenda 21, population reduction, get rid of the weak and elderly. This is worse than what Adolf Hitler had planned to do with his grand plan. This is literally being put in motion right now. And, of course, their idea is to genetically engineer people that are not only radiation resistant, but cybernetically and genetically enhanced the upper classes like a caste system in India. And the rest of us are kind of scrounging around, dying very early with degenerative diseases and unable to reproduce except by submitting our gametes after licensure in a laboratory. Now, in Japan, most women in northern Japan, if they get pregnant, they're either using methods to not get pregnant or they're having an abortion. That's pretty horrendous. Yeah, and, and something that I continually wonder about is if something else is coming, that, that is why they, they haven't uh, taken care of the BP problem as they should have or uh, addressed the Fukushima problem. Yeah, no, they're, 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 they're doing, yeah, they're doing it in advance because they need to have a culling occur uh, prior to whatever is next. You know, you just look through it logically and you pray on it. That's what I get. I don't have all the answers, but as I say, ask better questions. Back in a moment with more with Christina Consolo. Welcome back, and uh, I tell people not to sweat. If they take our radiation protection protocol, they're going to knock out 99% of the effect of the radiation. You start off with our uh, NIOSH N95 masks. And that's only for serious emergencies where the radiation level goes up significantly. That means like over goes from background of, say, 20 uh, uh, counts per minute over to over 100. And whatever it is, if it goes to what I call five times background, that's an emergency status. Three times background is called hazmat. Five times means you're getting fried. Uh, and that means external small radiation in the fleas. Uh, you take our Nutritrala every day and Nutri Defense. Then the additional ones are glutathione or cell detox glutathione, which is the S-acetyl glutathione, Nutritrala, Regenerex, and then the chelating agents, the only organic zeolite non-acid washed, and our Killer Max, uh, and you are going to be fine. And in fact, Dr. Jurakovich's research, uh, our nuclear expert who we had on last year, just taking a good probiotic like a Rizal 6 strain every day uh, will cut out 85% of the absorption of strontium and cesium. 
just doing that alone, let alone adding Killer Max and these other things. So I tell people, it's not time to freak out, but it's time to take things seriously. And those who want to just kind of scoff at you, you need to get in their face. You need to get, you need to get them to look up and look eyeball to eyeball and tell you that you're an idiot when you're asking better questions. You don't kind of accuse people, but you have to get in their face. And that means friends and relatives, you have to be ready to accept a little spittle. Uh, you have to kind of irritate people a bit because they're just frightened, like little children that don't want to know that there's a big wolf outside the, the cabin, and he's hungry, big Russian wolf, and he wants to eat them. And telling them that the Grimm's fairy tale, that there is no wolf, even though you can hear him growling, and you can almost smell the dank smell of his, of his fur, it's a lie to tell him that everything's fine. It's not fine. Things are not fine. You know, people don't realize when Fukushima happened that all our lives changed and, and we need to adapt. And yeah, you can it's, adapt it's, to it. And if you take these things, the people say, are you freaking out, Deagle? Are you doing this and that? First off, when I prayed, I wanted to make sure my home was at least seven miles inland and at least a thousand feet. And guess what? I'm sitting pretty. If you're sitting right on the coast, on the east or west coast, I wouldn't want to be there. If you're in any large city, you're nuts. You need to move to the outskirts of the city at least. You need to start messing with your neighbors to figure out, do you have a greenhouse? Do you have a food storage? Do you have personal protection? Do you have at least three weeks of water? Even drinking water. You're dead in a week if you don't have water. And let me tell you, if all the pumps stop, and people say, oh, they won't stop because the fire department pumps it, they'll stop it because they can't deal with the sewage. I went into research after last September, and I couldn't believe it when I checked at municipalities all across the country. None of them has this. So tell me about your walk, uh, the mutation walk, and uh, then maybe get into some of the points on why you believe the, a lot of people call it Planet X, I call it the, the Passover star, the red dwarf subclass 3 star that's coming into our solar system and what it's going to mean, not in August, September, because I don't have any confirmation, but sometime this decade. You know, I've noticed uh, a definite increase in the number of mutations in my area in southeast Michigan. Uh, there's um, some photos that have been uploaded to Fukushima Facts Mutation Watch or the Mutation Watch page on Facebook where you can see those and I'll be going back later this week and shooting video about 60% of the weeds and weeds grow fast and uptake a lot of water so they show uh, changes the quickest are, are showing defects and a number of defects which is broom thickening of stems um, and just the compound effect that's occurring on plants that are supposed to be single stemmed are growing out in every direction and, and some of them the way, are growing like other plants out of them. Right, what happens really? also is these plants will grow faster. Most people don't realize after Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the radiation burden and the electromagnetic pulse cause a massive bloom of flowers and other plants with lots of mutations. And it actually stimulates growth. It's the, uh, contrary to what you'd think. And this is what some people take wrongly when they talk about the idea of hormesis, where all radiation is good for you. Yeah, if you have radioactive stones in the stream from a mountain and the water flows over them and there's no isotopes actually entering the water molecules but only a signature of the radiation and the frequency, that's good for you. But if you have radioactive fleas of strontium, cesium, and other herpes isotopes showing entering your body like thorium, like Dr. Bernhoff said a month ago in the program here, you're crazy if you think that those are good for you. Especially things like tritium. Tritium's not good. And any lying piece of garbage that tries to tell you otherwise, Dr. Deagle's there to, with his intellectual power saw to hack them down. Yeah, and the, the um, frequent uh, saying that, that uh, the pro new people use is, well, you get radiation from the sun and from the ground, and that's true, but what blew out of the reactors is a million times worse. Oh, yeah. and these are, these are internally accumulating in your body. Uh, and when you fly, by the way, on altitude, and you can go in the NOAA site because they have data up from 2007, so it's long before Fukushima, you can see that as you go to higher altitude, you're going to get some more cosmic background radiation, solar radiation, etc. Those are primarily beta particles and gamma rays because the alpha particles can't penetrate the skin of the aircraft. They are taken in into the aircraft as a radiation release, and so are radioisotopes. And what happens is, back about 30 years ago, they took off even the HEPA filters inside aircraft. So the air inside an, air, an aircraft is usually compressed to 8,000 feet altitude. So if you're at 30,000 feet, they have to compress that air. So they're magnifying the radioactive components in that plume by many, many times. You know, if you calculate using Henry's law. So that air is compressed down. Maybe you're going to get, say, 20 or 30 times the radiation in the plume per volume because you have to create an 8,000 uh, foot altitude environment in the capsule of the, of the jet aircraft cabin. 
Uh, I tried to get data. I tried to get Dr. Wyden, uh, let Senator Wyden's uh, response. I'm preparing uh, documents for Senator Feinstein so that they can push to try to have radiation detection done in their commercial aircraft. But we are totally stymied. UC Berkeley will not respond to me. The government agencies won't respond. I talked to uh, Senator uh, Feinstein, so-called EPA nuclear expert, and I asked him, I said, look, the EPA are doing nothing. Their RADnet is useless. They don't even support their proper RADnet uh, sites that they do have, and the ones that show high levels, they take them offline. Amazing. Yeah. And he had no response. None. None. These people are like they're I don't know what they're doing. I was maybe going to fancy coffee shops, but they're certainly not doing their job. No, they're collecting a paycheck, and that's about it. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Tell us about in the remaining couple of minutes, because we're going to go into this more on Friday. What do you know on the 20 points you have about the approach of the, they call it Planet X? Because a lot of people think, oh, why does Diego get into this? It's because it's real. Uh, Moses, we refer to in the Old Testament, who wrote the first five books of the Bible, the, the Pentateuch, the, uh, the, the Torah, was trained by the high priest because he was a genius. He was the, the adopted son to become the Pharaoh. His name Moses meant he was already designated to be the next Pharaoh. He, uh, after one of his countrymen was killed, by the Egyptian uh, guards killing his countrymen, he decided to slay the guard, and then he would, took off to the, the uh, what's called the deserts of Midian. That was actually in Saudi Arabia, where he was, near Medi- Mecca and Medina. And he was trained in all the astronomy, so he knew about the approach of the what's called the Satan star. All of the ancient mon- uh, monotheistic religions of the ancient worlds originated uh, as a battle between the sun being Saul, because they're, they're all sun worshippers, and this Satan star, the destroyer that would come periodically every 3,600 years into our solar system. Every single one of the ancient sun worshipping religions from Mesoamerica to the Far East to China uh, to uh, uh, Medo Persia, all of these ones that worship the flying disc with the solar flares on the other side, all of them originated from the interaction between this returning class three red dwarf star and our son Saul. So tell us about what what side you have. Well we things that we do know, ninety percent of our solar systems are binary, which means we would be the exception if we didn't have a second sun. Right. We have geological evidence and tree rings and ice cores that show that there was a major upheaval in climate change, um, most of that from a substantial increase in the acidity of volcanic ash or increase in volcanic activity, and that's occurred about every 3,600 years. Right. We've had movement of the North Pole at an increasing rate over the last few years. Lots of unusual sun activity and flares. The sun is doing things that people have never seen before. We had an early sunrise in Greenland. It rose two days early. Um, the, the global economic collapse and the fact that no one is doing anything about it well, the reason why two rose two days early, and they don't want to tell you that the tilt of the of the Earth on its axis has already changed. Now, there's not been a lithospheric mantle disjunction yet. But what I was told back in U.S. Space Command back in July 10th, 1994, is that the favorite place for them to build their underground cities worldwide is in these ancient magma domes uh, where the lithosphere, the crust of the Earth, moves. And the crust can be anywhere from 10 to 50 miles or more thick. Slides over the mantle of the Earth, and the magma domes are left vacant, basically. And this happens, yeah, this has happened over millions and millions of years. And uh, this is going to happen again, just like that miniseries Battlestar Galactica. This has happened before, and this is going to happen again. Yeah, we have the increased uh, number of sinkholes in size and intensity. A few that were in South America in the past few months were extremely deep. Um, there's been a number of articles over the past few decades regarding uh, the Planet X, and in fact, in 1999, NASA had announced that they had a theory that our moon was possibly created by a planetary body that collided with Earth that was about the size of Mars, and this was announced at um, at a conference in Houston. Uh, yeah. Whirlpools forming in oceans, uh, earthquakes increase in activity and expression of data. Yeah, um, by we're going to continue this on Friday. Thanks very much, Christina. Yeah.